What is up, guys? It is Coasters and Things here today, and I'm reviewing Twister at Knobles. This is one of their three wooden roller coasters, the other two being Phoenix and Flying Turns. This is the largest coaster at Knobles and is often talked about for how it has crazy laterals. I absolutely agree. This ride has laterals galore. So Twister is located on the left side of Knobles, near the Crystal Pool. It was built in 1999, and what's crazy is Knobles didn't even hire a roller coaster manufacturer to build this ride. Instead, Knobles built this ride entirely themselves, one of the few coasters out there to be built by the park and not a manufacturer. It looks and feels like it was built by CCI, but nope, it wasn't. Its layout is actually fairly similar to Twister 2 at Elitch Gardens, which in turn is also similar to Mr. Twister at the original Elitch Gardens, which is no longer around. It also feels similar to Holiday World's wooden coasters. Those are crazy, and so is Twister. So you walk up to Twister, and you're just in awe of the massive wooden structure. It's just a mess of track going everywhere. It costs $3.50 to ride Twister, which you pay for in ride tickets, or you can get the wristband to ride it as many times as you want. It is the exact same price to ride as it does to ride Phoenix and Impulse. So each of the three big coasters at Knobles are all the same price. You get up into the station, and something really weird about this is that this is a curved station. That is super rare. How many roller coasters have a station that is curved? Very few. This ride runs with six car PTC trains in blue and purple. Now, they were only running one train the day I was at Knobles, the blue train. So no, I did not get to ride in the purple train, but that's okay. I got two rides on this, in the front and the middle. I definitely preferred the front. So you take a seat in your train and pull down your lap bar. Just like Phoenix, Twister has no seat belt, just the lap bar. Also, this may have just been the crew working the ride the day I was there, but I noticed that they don't try to staple you. They just check your lap bar. They don't try to force it down farther, which I appreciated. The operations were really good on Twister. I was very impressed. They were not quite as fast as Phoenix, but pretty close. So once you've gotten the all clear, you dispatch out of the station where you're still turning left a little, then you turn right into the first lift hill. This ride actually has two lift hills. This is right in the middle of the structure, directly under the second lift hill. Once you leave the first lift hill, you turn left, then right and up into the second lift hill. This is the bigger of the two lift hills. Once you get to the top, that's where you're at your max height of 102 feet. Once again, you turn left and then right, which leads you into the first drop. It's about 90 feet down, and from here on, you are hauling the mail. You hit a max speed of 52 miles per hour, but I'll tell you, it feels much faster than that at times. Anyways, at the bottom of the drop, you pass under the structure and come up into a left-handed turnaround. This is where you first begin to feel the laterals. You then dive down again, turn right just a hair, and then you go up into the most well-known part of the ride. This is an insane banked double helix to the left. This double helix goes on for so long. You are feeling a crap ton of laterals right here. You just keep getting slammed to the right. Also in this helix is when the roughness kicks in. Up until now, Twister is fairly smooth. Right here, though, it gets significantly rougher. It really jackhammers you around. After the double helix ends, you go up over a hill, which doesn't really give any airtime. This coaster's not about airtime, so don't expect it. You then start banking to the right, all the while you're just weaving in, out, and around the structure. You go over another small little hill, and you just keep on banking right. It's a long, drawn-out turn. You are definitely feeling the roughness right here. You pass through a tunnel, come back up, Dive down and back up again and glide into the curved brake run. I don't know what it is about Knobles and their curved brake runs, but both this and Phoenix have them. That ends your ride experience on Twister. This coaster's laterals are just flat out insane. 
I'd compare its laterals to rides like Legend at Holiday World and Boss at Six Flags St. Louis. They are the top three most lateral filled woodies that I have ridden. That being said, the one thing that knocks this coaster down for me is its roughness. It got pretty unbearable towards the end of the ride. This coaster is definitely not smooth and could benefit from some serious retracking. For a stark contrast, Phoenix is in the same park and that ride is super smooth. Twister, anything but smooth. It felt like my eyeballs were going to come out of their sockets. So yeah, if Knobles were to give this ride some TLC and retrack it, then this could be a much more enjoyable ride than what it is. For Twister's overall score, I'll give it a 7.5 out of 10. Now I know what you're thinking. That's a little low. Layout-wise, it's around like an 8.5. Yes, I did take off a full point for the unbearable roughness. It's just so prominent that I can't ignore it. In general, laterals just aren't my favorite thing on a coaster. That being said, if you love laterals, this is a coaster for you, for sure. I know some people who actually like this more than Phoenix, and I can see why. It is a lot bigger and more intense than Phoenix is. You can't deny that. If you can get past the roughness, then I think you can really enjoy Twister. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And this is Coasters and Things, signing out.